All right, I'll call the meeting to order. I believe we're still one short of a quorum, so we won't vote on the minutes yet. We have three presentations today, and I would just like to tell the committee that are these books, have they all got these books, or they have them? If you brought your books with you, under tab three, page two and three, you can actually see the budget, um, or you can see it online or whatever. You can see the De Department of Agriculture's line items in the general revenue budget and also the Western Division of Conservation and some other things that are there. And then our third presentation today. Seconds conservation. And then sec we'll find Secretary of State for you. If you just have something to look at, but they've passed out some material that'll refer to some of those things. But if you, you know, I'd make a habit of pointing that out to you as we do these hearings that these are the sections of the budget that actually end up in the budget bill. You know, so if you have, you know, there are several items that if you're looking down through the list as they're talking, you can ask them about. All right, I think our first pre presenter today is uh, the Honorable Kent Linhart, Commissioner of Agriculture. I'll invite him forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, you ready? All right, uh, Kent Leonhart, Commissioner of Agriculture. Glad to be here today. Uh, we're going to run through these slides. I made an hour presentation for the House, and I don't have quite as much time. But the, uh, the main thing I want to get across today is uh, when you look at the Department of Agriculture, you have $4 billion worth of industries, economic industries, protected in the state of West Virginia, $3 billion worth of forestry. Uh, you know, we have all the labs and everything else that does the uh, invasive species, and we track where those things are going. We inspect lumber going out of the state. Uh, so we have, we're protecting a $3 billion industry, and we're also protecting a $1 billion agricultural industry within the almost a $1 billion agricultural industry within the state of West Virginia. So that's about $4 billion of economic activity in the state being protected by the Department of Agriculture, plus all the food safety. Um, uh, we'll flip along here. But when you look at the food safety, uh, we have a lot of cooperative agreements with the uh, U.S. Department of Agriculture, and a lot of what we do hinges upon that. But we are also, you can see from the slides, one of ten laboratories funded by the, uh, under the Federal Emergency Response Network. Uh, West Virginia is well known for this. This was all set up under Commissioner Douglas, and we're continuing that today. Uh, of course, anytime you're dealing with food safety and, and budgets, you're dealing with the risk reward. How much uh, safety do you want and how much do you want, can you afford to put into it? And I know that you're going to use your notes for that. Uh, uh, you'll understand there. Uh, Got to move forward. Uh, we're going to be reviewing all the rules in the department in the food safety arena over the next four years, keeping with new, last year's legislation. Uh, but we also have some outdated uh, rules on the books that we need to make sure we're doing everything right. Uh, of course, we have constraints with the USDA and the FDA. Uh, we have a need for a biosecurity officer, which uh, actually protects uh, against E. coli and anthrax uh, potential spreads in the state of West Virginia. Uh, forest health, uh, you can read the slide there. I was talking about a little bit earlier, but forestry is our only renewable natural resource. If you look down at the funding here, the chart, uh, you'll see that a lot of our uh, money is uh, tied to federal dollars. Uh, a lot of times we have to put the money out first before we can get the reimbursement from the federal government. So we have to have that money in the kitty. And a lot of our costs are matched primarily by personnel costs. And that's the part that's a lot of it is funded in the general revenue uh, of the uh, in the budget bill. If you look at the uh, department, uh, the history, uh, you'll see from 2013 we we're at $12 million approximately in general revenue. Now excluding Cedar Lakes, we're down under nine, around nine million. Um, that's basically eroded uh, for our general operating of about 85 percent of what we do in general operations. You'll see in the overall budget bill, we we do spend going through the department with the West Virginia Conservation Agency and Farmland Protection. We're running about $73 million through the department's 
uh, administrative staff. Uh, some of the, like I said, uh, I already talked about that. Well, let's move on to the next slide. Uh, last year, a million dollars was removed in cash, was removed from the department to balance the budget. Things that I'm looking uh, for is uh, some spending authority increases. Uh, I would love to be able to have the Department of Agriculture eventually become more self-sufficient and use less and less general revenue. With, a little bit, with increases in spending authority, we can work towards getting to that goal uh, through either farm operations and uh, people are talking to me about coal leases on some of the state farms. Uh, I know there's other states that don't touch with general revenue to fund their departments of agriculture. Uh, we're a smaller state. It's going to be a little harder for us to get there. We don't have the population. We don't have the industries that pay the uh, fees and all that other states do. But uh, working together, I think we can get there. And hopefully over the next few years, we can get closer and closer with less reliance on general revenue. But I'm not, but I'm not asking to cut general revenue right now. <laughs> uh, I've only been in there a little bit of time. Uh, Cedar Lakes. Uh, that's the gift that keeps on giving. Uh, I do have, uh, have some plans and thoughts on Cedar Lakes. We can, uh, but I do need the legislature's help to keep that funded, uh, the supplemental funding for the next two years. Then you'll see in a plan over time a step down of that. I believe in three to four years we can have it totally self-sufficient, but there's been some sad neglect and we need some facilities upgrades. Uh, we have, we're interviewing right now for a new uh, manager for the facility. We brought on a sales manager uh, to try to bring in more revenue to it. Uh, I think we're on the right track, but I'm going to need your help for a couple of years, and, and the, the good gift could become a better gift later on. Uh, you'll see a supplemental spending request for, uh, in general revenue, just spending authority only there also for another million dollars. I'm just asking the, uh, for your permission to spend it as we earn it so that we can improve. You guys are being easy. You're not asking many questions. Uh, Veterans to Agriculture. Uh, spending authority has only been $7,500 over the last uh, couple of years. I'm asking uh, for some revenue and spending authority of about $250,000. Uh, you know I talked about that program about four years ago. And uh, we've been running it on a shoestring at the department right now, but I can give you eight veterans right now that have said that their lives have been saved because of the Veterans Agriculture Program. And, you know, what's the life of any veteran that's going through post-traumatic stress? I believe we can do it. There's a lot more need out there, and I believe we can use that. And also it's going to generate economic activity. There's a, there's a beef farmer earning six figures as a veteran to agriculture person right now. So there's a lot more we can do there. Uh, Gold Star Families, we can talk about that. Uh, let's see. We're restructuring the department into an agricultural business development uh, section. Uh, it's, it's in keeping with the uh, legislative and constitutional requirements of marketing. We're just renaming it because agriculture is shifting in the state of West Virginia. We're no longer the traditional Agriculture. We have to protect the traditional agricultural programs. But as I was talking to a fellow senator here uh, a little bit earlier, the uh, face of agriculture in West Virginia is going to change and has to change. Uh, we need to get with the new modern technologies. We need to do more fruits and vegetables in the state. Uh, I think you'll see if we do this right, you'll see a savings on the back end in the health of the state of West Virginia because we're, we've, all our institutions and everything else have gone to the prepared foods and it's part of the problem. We have a lot of diabetes and other health issues in the state. So if we do all this in conjunction and work, do this right in the beginning through proper agriculture business development, get more fresh fruits, vegetables, and meats to the, uh, to the citizens, uh, you'll see a, an improvement in your medical budget later on down the road. Agritourism, the governor's talked about agritourism a lot. Uh, incident preparedness. Department of Agriculture obviously has a strong role in protecting the citizens of the state. The, you know, no natural disaster. We can't pre predict terrorism all the time. We can't predict natural disasters. 
but the government's role certainly should be to help mitigate the uh, human suffering that comes with these, and your Department of Agriculture has a strong role. We do a lot of food distribution, as you know. Uh, a lot of that is uh, passed through funding from the uh, federal government. Uh, we have capabilities, and we're looking at using those capabilities in other areas to help expand the actual business development. Uh, we want to try to maximize the uh, resources within the department. Cedar Lakes, I talked about a little bit there. Be glad to answer any questions. Uh, at the end here, we've got, you know, we still are concerned with livestock health. We've got a shortage as an apiary and bee research. Uh, black fly program for the tourism industry is very important. It's a little bit underfunded for the past few years. Uh, your Department of Agriculture is working real hard on the Chesapeake water quality issues. But what's going to come down the, in the future, and we know it's coming, is the Ohio Valley. So we're funded and we're doing all the work in the Chesapeake Valley, but some of those same restrictions are going to come over to the Ohio Valley. We were going to have to duplicate those efforts. Uh, and that's going to be expensive down the road. Uh, gypsy moth program, we're below the threshold to keep up with that. Uh, and that's been a real success story in saving our forest industry. As you know, West Virginia is the second uh, in hardwoods, the second most forested state in the nation for hardwoods per square mile. We want to, we've been successful. We want to keep that program. In the last few years, we've slipped a little bit. Uh, we can only achieve our vision through your support. And my final thing before I be glad to ask questions, and there's no substitute for a safe, affordable, and available food supply. That was quick and dirty. I'm no, that's very I'm good. I mean, you know, I'm looking particularly on this sheet that you gave us. It probably, you know, because it, you know, it, what affects the budget directly is kind of, you know, where we like to go. So, uh, but I'm, are there any questions of the Agriculture Commissioner before I ask a couple? I don't see any lights. <laughs> on the, uh, spent, on this sheet that you gave us, uh, your special revenue line 1484, um, or fund 1484. You're asking for spending authority increase. I think this is for Cedar Lakes. Yeah, we're but asking for two just major explain funding it. increases. Yeah, that, funding increases. That's, money, that's not general revenue money you're asking for. That's the right to spend money that you Correct. collect from the people who stay at Cedar Lakes. Correct. <coughs> you know, we're not asking, you know, we're still asking for the $600,000 in general revenue. But then we're, in addition to that, we're asking for a million dollars more in spending authority. You know, hoping we grow beyond that $600,000 we need. Obviously, being a good fiscal conservative, if I have any money left over, I'll let you know. And then on, on the front, you've got a uh, million dollars of an improvement request, and that... That would affect you, yes. That's a general revenue. That's a general, price. yes. $600,000 for operating expenses and a million dollars for improvements. Some of those uh, facilities have been sorely neglected while they were the, with the Department of Education. I'm not pinging on them. That's just the way things were. Uh, a lot of the facilities need upgrading. We can house 700 plus people, but we can uh, in rooms, but we only can fit a hall of 400. So, <laughs> yeah. And right now, if they get overload, they set up tents uh, to have the conferences and conventions in. Okay, so that's something that was not in the governor's budget. Correct. And you're asking for a million more. Correct. I'll throw it out there, Mr. Chairman. You threw it. <laughs> if All I right. can earn it on my own, uh, we'll do that with the spending authority increase. In the other line? In the other line. Okay. Senator from Preston. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Have you considered uh, public-private partnerships for Cedars Lake, Cedar Lakes? And if so, is there anything that the legislature needs to authorize in order for that to take place? I haven't considered it at this point in time, no. I mean, but that's certainly the legislature's. Uh, I'd consider that. I mean, okay. we want it to work. Shifting gears, if I may continue, um, what is the disposition of the uh, lands held by the Department of Agriculture as far as mineral leasing? Because I know many of the farms were owned in fee by the state. Some of the revenue we receive is from mineral uh, resources. And I'm actually in discussion with Arts Coal on the, uh, I believe it's the Prunty Town, 
uh, farm has some coal mineral rights, but we're trying to sort out the mineral rights under there too. Some people saying we own it all. Some people are saying there's other mineral holders on there. But I've been in discussion. Arch Coal is doing operations in that area, and we're working on it. And again, that would be another necessity of increasing my spending authority if we receive that, and then I don't need as much right. general revenue. So it's all tied in together. Uh, it's not putting the cart before the horse, I guess. Do you know offhand, and it might be more of a question for council, if the uh, minerals were leased on a farm which is under the direction of the Department of Agriculture, would that revenue stream come to the general revenue fund or would it be captured in a special revenue fund for the department? It comes, right now it goes into special revenue for the department, and that's by law. <coughs> Very good. Thank and that's you. another reason I need the spending authority so I can, if we get more revenue in, then I don't need as much general revenue, so I need an increase in spending authority. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator from the 8th. Mr. Commissioner, thank you for coming. Um, I'd like to hear uh, just a, few, a couple things. My observation in years past were that the Department of Agriculture had people kind of spread out around the state. That's correct. Uh, is that still the case? It certainly is. And can you give me an idea of the footprint that the Department of Agriculture has in terms of uh, locations occupied? You don't have to name them all, but just give me an idea of the fixed sure. bases that you have, to, and, 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 and an idea if, if you plan to keep all those, if they're going to be diminished, what, what your plans are. Okay. Uh, that's a great question. The uh, Obviously, the main office in the, depart in, the, in the Capitol building here is rather small compared to the other constitutional offices. Most of our offices and laboratories are up on, uh, on the hill uh, called Guthrie, uh, just a little bit, about 20 minutes north of town here. And I invite everyone out there to give me a call, and we'll be glad to set up a tour. That's where most of our laboratories are. Uh, and they're kind of run down right now, too, to be quite honest. And I see another senator nodding his head in agreement. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, and there's, you know, people kind of courting us to move over to the Tech Center or to Montgomery and, and other areas. So that's up to the legislature whether we move and can afford to make that, that move on, on down the road. Our other main uh, location is over in Moorfield, and that's the heart, and, uh, the heart of the uh, department for protecting the poultry industry, which is about half of our agricultural output in the state of West Virginia. Uh, plus, uh, it does all the, a lot of nutrient management plans that are in compliance with the Chesapeake Bay watershed. So those are the biggest areas. Then throughout the other parts of the state, like up in Morgantown, there's an office, and I'm actually looking at closing that. Uh, the department, uh, WVU College of Agriculture, has offered us uh, no charge space for a deputy. And so my deputy is not going to be sitting next door to me with today's technology. Uh, so he's going to have an office up there to better collaborate with uh, other state agencies and federal agencies, Natural Resource Conservation Service, WVU, uh, and there's some things that we're going to talk about, partnering on laboratory work where we can help train college students to be, go into agriculture and save money in the labs as well. Because there's going to have to be some expansion of laboratory, particularly under the Food Safety Modernization Act, where more and more FDA rules are coming down upon, upon states. So we're going to have to look at those type of things as well. And we're also going to look at all the other satellite things. And some of this may, as you know, I've talked about the forestry. Forestry's got offices all over the state. Department of Agriculture has separate offices over the state. Should forestry return to the Department of Agriculture, there may be a, a good opportunity for uh, combining those offices. Part of the reason that you have so many uh, personnel throughout the state of West Virginia in the Department of Agriculture because we have regulatory and compliance officers throughout the state. Uh, most people don't realize that we go inspect the uh, milk machine, the, the dairy machines at all the soft serve ice cream places around the state. So we have to have people strategically located uh, throughout the state to, to do that testing on the dairy products. They also go into the, all the feed stores and they uh, checking f feed, they check the seed to make sure it's in compliance. Uh, uh, actually, the USDA won an award recently of $5,200. It's not a lot of money, but an unscrupulous seed dealer and our regulatory officer did all the legwork to win that, help them win. I got a letter from the USDA commending her for her work in helping keep 
uh, seed production properly. So we have compliance folks throughout scattered throughout the state. I haven't had a chance, quite frankly, within 30 days to look at everything, but those are all on the radar of being there's chances for some consolidation. Yeah, thank you. I, I realize you're a newbie at this, so I don't want to put you on the spot. But no problem. Uh, do you have a general counsel in the ag department? I am. You. I am sharing a general counsel with the uh, West Virginia Conservation Agency. Uh, that's embedded from the attorney general. It's my intent after this session is over to start looking at a, at a general counsel. But again, that depends upon how you leave my general revenues alone <laughs> yeah. and what I can afford. You feel like there's a need to have a general counsel? Oh, absolutely, counsel. there's a need. There's so you, need. you can't rely on the AG's office to, to give you the service you need in there? Um, no, there's just too many questions that come up on a day-to-day -day basis that we need answers right away. Right now, I've contracted uh, a general counsel part-time uh, through July 1, through this fiscal year, because I knew that was in the budget. And I'm going to be reviewing that, whether we hire somebody full time. How about purchasing? Do you have purchasing authority? Do you have to go through the purchasing division? Or do you, are you one of those? We go exempt? through purchasing the, the purchasing division, but we have purchasing officers in the, in, that are part of the Department of Agriculture. Yeah. Is that? But, but whatever you buy is, goes through the purchasing division? Yes, we have to go through the purchasing division. OK. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Senator. I'm going to recognize the uh, Senator from Marion for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move approval of the minutes from both the morning and afternoon sessions of February the 16th for the Finance Committee meetings. All right, you've heard the motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed the same. The ayes appear to have the ayes do have it. I declare the motion adopted. Did I ask for the noes? I guess I didn't. But there were no noes. All right, I declare the motion adopted. <laughs> All right, now we're going to proceed on. Thank you very much. I have no more lights Thank you, to the Mr. West Virginia Conservation Agency.